let's discuss about conditional codes. The processor keeps tracking of information about the result of various operations. This is accomplished by recording the required information in digital or individual uh, bits called conditional code flags. Uh, these flags are grouped together in a special processor register called conditional code register or called as status flags or status registers. Okay, so commonly four flags are going to be present over here. One is going to be called as a negative flag or sign flag, second one zero flag, third one overflow flag and fourth one carry flag. Uh, if n is nothing but a sign uh, flag which is going to be set if the result is negative or it will be cleared if the result is positive. Meanwhile, a zero flag if which is the, when the result is going to be zero, the arithmetic operations which is going to be producing a result is going to be a zero, then the zero flag is going to be get set, otherwise it will be cleared as zero. Uh, during the arithmetic overflow operations, any overflow is going to be occurred, this overflow flag will be get set, otherwise it will be cleared as zero. Meanwhile, and when an arithmetic operation is going to get performed, uh, if carry is going to get produced, obviously what happened, the carry flag is going to be set. Otherwise, if no carry is going to be produced from the arithmetic operation or the result of the arithmetic operation, then this flag is going to be zero. Let us have a small example. A is equal to 11110000 and B is equal to 00010100. When I'm going to add this operation, obviously what happened, it's going to produce a result of 11011100. If you're going to see that obviously what happened, it's going to produce a carry over here. So the carry is going to be produced, C is equal to 1, carry will be produced over there. Meanwhile, the sign bit is going to be set as 1 because the, the most significant bit of the result is going to be 1. So sign bit is going to be set because it's a negative number. Whereas the overflow is will not be producing any overflow. So V is equal to 0. And finally, if you're going to see the result, result is not 0. It's consisting of 11011100. So there is 0 flag will not be get set over there. So this is a small example which have been there in the conditional branch instruction when we are going to use this, this four flags status has to be get set or it has to be get verified over there. Okay. So a carry flag, a sign flag, a overflow flag and a zero flag. So four flags are going to be checked over there. How actually this is going to be get operated? Let us see a status bit over here. I am going to take an example of A and B, two data are going to be get producing a output uh, with the help of an ALU, arithmetic and logic unit. The result which is going to be taken as F, F is going to be get checked with F is equal to N minus 1, that's nothing but it's going to check the most significant bit is going to be either 1 or 0 based on that the sign bit is going to be get verified, the sign bit is going to be get verified over there. So when the most significant bit of this particular f n minus 1 is going to be a 1, then sign bit will be get set. Then a part of the portion of this particular uh, outcome of this ALU is going to be given to the zero checker. The zero checker will check whether all the 8 bits or 16 bits or 32 bits, however the status data are going to be present, the bits are going to be zero or not. If all the bits are going to be zero, then the zero flag is going to be set the zero flag as high one. Okay. Meanwhile, we're going to check two data over here. When the arithmetic and logical operations performed by, for the input A and B is which is going to produce a ninth bit or a 17th bit or and 33rd bit of difference upon the input bits, then the carry flag will be set. That carry will be get given a yeah, highest value as nothing but a bit one that is going to be set through this flag to mention that or to indicate that carry has been produced from the ALU operation. Meanwhile, any overflow is going to be present or not. We are going to check with the CN minus one status and with the CN status. Both are going to be exclusively or both are going to get XR so that the outcome which is going to be producing an yeah, overflow bit. So with this kind of four informations, four different operations we are going to perform over there from the ALU output and the, from the ALU data. So we are going to check the status bits and we are going to verify the status bits for which bit has been set or which flag has been set over there as a carry flag or a sign flag or a zero flag or a overflow flag such a way the status bits are going to be get verified and that's going to be get useful for us to come across or come to know about which 
uh, data or the outcome of this is belonging to which category of the data whether it's going to be in the positive number or a negative number our result is going to be zero or carry has been produced or overflow has been happened over there or not such a way we are going to produce the conditional codes with the status bits let's move on to the last topic of this first module ieee notation what actually an ieee notation is an ieee notation is nothing but a standard representation to to represent an floating point number in the ieee notation there are two representations we are going to make it over there one is single precision second is going to be double precision both the single precision and double precision both are going to be implied with the base of two actually what is single precision a 32 bit data which is going to be called as a single bit uh, single precision and uh, 64 bit data representation is going to be called as a double precision representation let us see about that this 32 bit data if you're going to see about the 32 bit data the 32 in this 32 bit data from the least significant bit to the most significant bit from lsb to msb we are going to measure that from the lsb that first 23rd bit is going to be called as mantessa the next 24th bit onwards 8 bits are going to be called as exponent data and the last bit is going to be called as sign bit data the most significant bit 32nd bit or b31 is going to be called as a sign bit data okay meanwhile if you're going to see about this particular sing uh, double precision if it's going to be a 64 bit representation in the 64 bit representation what happens the from the least significant bit uh that is nothing but the, from the zeroth bit to 51st bit uh total of 52 bits are going to be called as mantessa and 52nd bit onwards up to 11 bits are going to be called as exponent bits to represent the xs 1023 datas and the last bit is going to be the most significant bit is going to be called as a sign bit data one bit is going to be used as a sign bit data this is this representation is going to be called as ieee notation okay in case of a 32 bit uh, 0 to 20 second bit is going to be a mantessa in case of 64 bit double precision 0 to 50 first bit is going to be called as mantessa and in case of 32 bit the 23rd bit onwards 8 bits are going to be called as exponent or in case of 64 bit a double precision 52nd bit uh, 53rd bit onwards 11 bits are going to be called as exponent and the last bit in both the cases of single precision or double precision the last uh, bit I think the most significant bit is going to be called as sign notation okay the representation of mantissa exponent with the signature or a sign all the three are going to be called as ieee notation what actually a peculiarities of ieee notation the floating point numbers have to be represented in a normalized form to maximize the use of available mantissa digits that is a main peculiar function which is going to be represented in the form of ieee notation in the base 2 representation which implies the most significant bit of the mantissa is always equal to 1 if every number is normalized then the most significant bit of mantissa is always 1 we can do any way without storing the msb also most significant bit also IEEE notations assumes that all numbers are normalized so that the most significant bit of the mantissa is a 1 and does not store the bit. So the real most significant bit of a number in the IEEE notation is either a 0 or a bit 1. The value of the numbers represented in the IEEE single precision notation are in the form of plus or minus uh, 1 point m into 2 to the power of e minus 127 because it's going to represent the exponents of minus 127 whereas in the uh, 64 bit double precision it's going to be excess minus 1023 uh, which, which, which will not exceed the data of minus 128 or minus 1024 which have been represented to which are used to represent for the exponent data okay so the hidden one form in the integral part of the mantissa is going to be the main thing that's nothing but uh, minus 127 excess minus 127 and excess minus 1023 so this is going to be called as the peculiarities of ieee notation so the floating point numbers are going to be always represented in the form of ieee notations either it may be a single rep precision representations or double precision representation either a 32 bit or a 64 bit okay so students uh, with this i am going to wind up the first module uh, we will see soon we will uh, shortly we can uh,
see the next chapter in the new video thank you for your patience uh, listening thank you ananda